So we have luxury cars, luxury handbags, luxury water, luxury watches, yachts, and private planes. And so why is there no such thing as luxury apps or luxury software? There are whole industries built around billionaires spending $200 billion on a yacht that they use for two weeks in a year to flex on their peers. So why are there no luxury options for software and apps that billionaires would still spend hours every day on? If you compare your phone and a multi-millionaire's phone, yeah, probably the figures on the banking app are gonna be different. $100 billion. But you would both use WhatsApp to send messages, Instagram and Twitter to share stuff, Chrome as a browser or Google to search for things. Now, of course, there are apps for hiring private jets or whatever, but what I wanna find out is why there's no $2,000 a month premium search engine for millionaires, or why there's no $1,000 premium luxury email client. In 2008, an app called I Am Rich appeared on the iPhone App Store. It cost $999.99, and it had no real functionality other than saying, I am rich, I deserve it, I am good, healthy, and successful. Eight people ended up buying it, but it was removed after 24 hours from the App Store. And while having an app like this can be some kind of a weird flex, it turns out luxury apps do exist. They're actually pretty cool, but to understand them, we first need to understand the three key ingredients to luxury. And the first one is quality and craftsmanship. So if you haven't noticed by the accent, I come from Italy which is home to many world-famous luxury brands. And what they have in common is that they all started by focusing on very high-quality products and craftsmanship. Think of all the artisans making luxury handbags for Loro Piana, the designers and tailors making Valentino dresses, or the engineers creating bespoke $5 million hypercars at Pagani. And yes, a $5 million hypercar from Pagani is not a better car than a regular Toyota or whatever. It's impractical, every scratch costs you $50,000, and a car that costs 100 times less still brings you from point A to point B. But this is what luxury is. It's not necessarily about high performance. It's about something that is incredibly high quality and that you know is the result of expert craftsmanship. And so let's look at the world of software and apps. Can an app be high quality and the result of actual craftsmanship? Well, the answer is absolutely it can. I think we all had an experience with an app or a software that works really well. Maybe it had also some cool delighters and cool details and touches and animation. We are definitely able to see when a piece of software is of high quality, especially because we are also very quick to notice when something is really bad. I have come across all kinds of bad software throughout the years. Whether it's bugs everywhere or a nonsensical user experience or terrible visuals, we all experienced it at least once. And actually my full-time job as a product manager is working on a team that makes software. And I can tell you that this is very much craftsmanship work. Instead of letter carving tools, people have keyboards, but the concept is the same. Making good software is the result of highly skilled people in their own domain, like developers and designers. And while it seems like it's something very distant from an artisanal workshop, I think it's really not. And so if apps and software can actually have quality and craftsmanship, we need to look at the next ingredient for making luxury, which is exclusivity. From the impossible raffles to get the latest Louis Vuitton limited edition, to the ultra-limited pieces that watchmaker Richard Mille releases, humans are fascinated by the idea of having something no one else can have. We love that idea of the item 1 of 99. And luxury brands have become masters at this. If you want to buy one of the most limited cars that Ferrari makes, you cannot just be walking into a dealership. You need to first buy three or four entry-level Ferraris, and then once you build up your collection, you can maybe hope to be called by the brand to have the privilege of spending $1 million on their latest luxury limited edition. The same has been going on with Rolex and many other luxury watchmakers. And this lore around how to get a certain limited edition only fuels the demand and interest for the product. Now, when we look at software and apps, this is where we start to see the first cracks. Because by default, software and apps can be replicated infinitely at basically zero cost. Once you develop something like Instagram once, there is no direct cost in installing it on another new device. And speaking of Instagram, when it comes to certain types of apps, in many cases being exclusive is actually something negative. Because thanks to the law of network effects, the more people have and use an app or platform, the more that platform becomes valuable. You want to have the most people possible on WhatsApp because you want to be able to send messages to the most people possible. So can you 
build exclusivity for apps and software? Turns out, yes, you can. And the first way is NFTs. Now, I don't want to discuss here whether an NFT of a cartoon monkey is good or bad, but the technology behind NFTs is definitely a way to build digital scarcity. And then there's waitlist and artificially limiting access to a digital product to build exclusivity. Does anyone remember Clubhouse when it launched in 2021? Back then, the fact that you can only access via invite has played a key role in building up interest and demand. And don't forget that brands like Louis Vuitton are also playing the same game of increasing exclusivity artificially, for example by removing from the market or even destroying unsold items. So when it comes to exclusivity, while software is born to be infinitely replicable, there's definitely ways to introduce that sense of limited edition and create that exclusive aura. Now, one of the pieces of software that is definitely not just for the elite that I found very helpful recently is the sponsor of this video, which is Incogni. If you ever receive unsolicited spam calls on your phone, or if, for example, you are flooded by spam emails, this is because by clicking accept cookies on some random button five years ago, or even just by visiting some websites, your data has been sold and resold to data brokers. These companies buy and sell their information. And yes, you can technically find out who among these hundreds of companies has your data, reach out individually to remove them, and then fiddle around with forms and regulation and laws. Or you can save dozens of hours and leave all the work to Incogni. I literally signed up, choose which data I want to get removed, and Incogni got to work immediately, requesting removal from 75 data brokers. Incogni is offering to the viewers of this channel 100 spots to sign up to the service with a 60% discount. And you can find the link in the description. And now back to the video, because to find out why there's no such thing as luxury software, we have to look at the third ingredient of luxury, which is price and economics. For any regular everyday item, a higher price means lower sales. You don't need to be a Nobel Prize in economics to understand this. But for luxury items, a high price is actually a key ingredient and a way of signaling and positioning themselves as better and more desirable. This is why luxury companies have very clear and similar economics. For each product they sell, they have high profit margins, which they are able to get because of the high price. And also for each item, they have high variable costs which is the cost of making one unit of that product. This is the cost, for example, of hand building that luxury car or sewing together that luxury handbag. So most of the cost is actually variable. It depends on how many units they make. For software and tech companies, the first part is also very similar. Tech companies also tend to have high profit margins. They are able to charge a lot more than the product costs them to make. But, and this is the real key, this is true only for massive tech companies. Because basically all the costs of a tech company are fixed cost. Building software is very expensive. You need to hire very expensive people, give them very expensive laptops, give them avocado toast. But you need to do all of that regardless of whether you're gonna sell one or one million copies of that software. So you can make a ton of money, but only if you're able to reach a certain scale of customers. And most tech companies actually lose money in their first years. And this is the reason why there's no such thing as established luxury apps or luxury software. You're basically able to make tons of money only if you have a gigantic customer base of millions of people that are paying you to recoup those fixed costs. So is this really it? Luxury apps cannot exist? Well, not really. Let me introduce you to Superhuman, an exclusive email client that costs $30 a month. Yep. You heard that right, $30 a month. Email is free for everyone. You can download any client that you can think of for free. But Superhuman managed to create one of the few truly luxury apps in existence. And they have been incredibly successful at it too, because they were able to crack the three key ingredients of luxury. The quality of this app is what really sets it apart. It's built for people that deal with tons of emails every day, and they crafted each piece of the experience to be ultra fast by allowing you to do literally anything with keyboard shortcuts and by pioneering the command K bar. Every interaction, every animation, every design detail is thought out and tested to optimize for speed. To make things even more personal, they also did something that is considered usually a terrible idea in software. A one-on-one -on -one chat with a real human to help you on board to the app for every single user. When it comes to exclusivity, it turns out that there's a lot of people that wanted this premium email experience. And they were able to maintain Superhuman exclusive and limited by using an invite system and queue. 
They only allow in each month a certain amount of users and you can only get in if a member invites you. And finally, when it comes to price, it's just crazy for a personal email client to cost $30 a month. And as we said, since it nails the first two ingredients of luxury, this high price is actually a positive differentiator for them. But now comes the problem that we just talked about. And now the most profitable thing for them in the short term and what they would be pressured to do is opening up the waitlist. Let anyone have this product that all these people want. Maybe over time lower the price a little bit and make it more affordable. This would actually bring them tons of cash. But this would also not make them a luxury product anymore and completely kill the branding that they've built so far. Next, I would love to see more of these luxury apps like Superhuman. I'd love to see a software company with physical stores in major cities next to Gucci or Louis Vuitton or Rolex. And this is because very often the luxury or premium market is where a lot of innovations come from. For example, in the 1970s, only luxury cars like Cadillacs had cruise control. But then over time, it trickled down to lower and lower tier cars until now everybody has that. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And here is another one that you might enjoy.